Today, I'm going to show you how to access your isolated networks using a jump server, also known as a jump host, a jump box, or a bastion host. Oh, and we're going to be getting a little help from the Spartans. First though, I want to say a big thank you to Twingate for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. So imagine you have multiple servers in an isolated network. This could be your home network, a corporate network, or even a cloud network hosting some web servers. Now, what if you wanted access to these servers remotely, say over the internet? Well, one option is to open all of your devices to the public internet. For example, you could enable port forwarding for each device. And this would work perfectly fine for your remote access. You'd be able to connect to every device from anywhere in the world. But, and there's always a but, you wouldn't be the only person that can access these devices. By doing this, you haven't just opened one door to the network you've opened three doors to the network. Now imagine there isn't just three devices. Let's say it's 10 or 100. Each one is a prime target for attackers and you will have to defend yourself on all fronts. This is what we call the attack surface. In the previous port forwarding video, I set up a honeypot and showed the results of just 24 hours. Now you can see just how many access requests there were in just that short amount of time. And that was with just one public device, let alone 10. If an attacker gains access to your devices, any number of things can happen. They could encrypt your data and demand a ransom, steal your data to sell, or add your devices to a larger botnet of infected devices. So then, this is why we want to have firewalls blocking incoming traffic from the public internet to reduce the attack surface and stop these attacks. But this puts us back to square one when it comes to remote access. There is another option though. One that will not only give us the remote access we need, but also help keep that attack surface down to a minimum. This is by using something called a jump server. Before we talk about jump servers though, have you ever seen the film 300? It's where 300 Spartans march off to defend against a huge Persian army. The Spartan army, while drastically outnumbered, was able to fight off wave after wave after wave of Persian soldiers. But how did they do this? They used a narrow pathway to their advantage. The Persians were forced to use this pathway where the full force of the Spartan army was waiting. And this is exactly what a jump server is. Well, not exactly, but it's pretty similar. Instead of exposing each device directly to the internet, we can add another host called a jump server. This host and only this host will be directly accessible to the internet. Public access to all other devices is blocked. This server will also be able to connect to our internal devices as well. See how this works? This jump server is our narrow pathway, filtering all connections through this one host. By having only one publicly facing host, we reduce the attack surface and force the attackers to use this one route. And of course, this host will be locked down with all of our Spartans, I mean, security. Okay, so now we know what a jump server is, let's look at how they're set up. Right after, we take a look at our sponsor. Jump servers, VPNs, and port forwarding are all ways to access networks remotely. There is a much easier way to access computers and devices in your networks though. And this is by using Twingate, who is the sponsor of today's video. Twingate provide secure and hassle-free access to your devices from anywhere in the world on any device. All you need to do is install the connector somewhere in the network and your work is pretty much done. The connector reaches out to the authorized remote users, meaning that you completely eliminate the need to open your network to the internet and potential attackers. Not only is this very simple to set up, but you have complete control by specifying which devices can be accessed and on which port numbers. You can even specify the security features that a device must have before being able to connect to a device. This keeps access to your networks controlled and secure. The best part about using Twingate is it's completely free for up to five users. Use the link in the description to get started. Okay, so jump servers can be set up in various ways, but I'm gonna give you a general overview of how they work. First, we have our isolated network. This contains the devices we want to access. We also want to protect this network from outside threats. So we place a firewall in front of it. This firewall will block all incoming connections from the outside world. Then we need to add our jump server. 
We want our jump server to be able to connect to our isolated devices, so we need to allow the connections through the firewall, but only from the jump server. Everything else remains blocked. To help keep everything secure and locked down though, we don't want to just allow everything from the jump server. We just want to allow the protocols we need to connect to our devices. Now, most of the time, this is going to be RDP or SSH, depending on your needs. So now we have our jump server that has direct access to the isolated network. But now our jump server is currently just sitting there wide open to the public internet. So we want to put another firewall in front of the jump server. Again, to keep everything as secure as possible, we want to lock down the access to the jump server to only the protocols we need, which again will be either RDP or SSH, depending on your needs. Everything else is blocked. Our jump server is now in something called a DMZ or demilitarized zone. A DMZ is an isolated area of a network where security rules are more relaxed to allow public access. Okay, so now anytime we want to connect to one of the remote devices, we first need to connect to the jump server and then connect or jump to the remote device. All connections are now filtered through this one jump server. So by using this method, we now only have one entry point instead of one for each device. This drastically reduces our attack surface. It also means that we can focus all of our attention on this one single entry point and ensure that everything is as secure as possible. We do this by making sure everything is up to date and the server is hardened with security policies and tools. Using a jump server as the centralized point of access also makes it easier for us to monitor and log activity. Everything is going through this one server. All of this makes it much easier for us to manage, but it also makes it a lot harder for the attackers to compromise this jump server and gain access to our isolated network. Now let's talk about some of the downsides of a jump server. While jump servers can drastically improve security by reducing the attack surface, they are not without their drawbacks. One of the main downsides is the introduction of a single point of failure. Now, if the jump server goes down or is compromised, access to the internal resources may be affected. So if the jump server is critical, it's important to add some redundancy, like a second jump server. Another downside is the potential for a bottleneck created by routing all traffic through a single server. This can lead to performance issues, especially if the jump server is not provisioned to handle the traffic load. This, of course, depends on what you're using it for. And of course, while the jump server does reduce the attack surface, it still is exposed itself and it requires some strong security. That's why we need to make sure the jump server is regularly updated, is monitored and it's patched to protect against the latest vulnerabilities. So then you might be wondering, why not just use a VPN for remote access? And that's a great question. VPNs are a great choice for remote connections. However, there are some situations where a jump server might be the better option. First, setting up and managing a VPN can be a little complex, especially for the larger networks. VPNs require configuration on both the client and the server side and can often involve things like certificates and user access controls. A jump server, on the other hand, can offer a more straightforward solution for controlling access without the additional need and overhead of configuring and managing a full VPN. VPNs also generally give a broader access to the isolated networks. This broad access can increase the risk of lateral movement within the network if a user's device does become compromised. So if your organization has a small number of remote users that need access to an internal resource, or if access is only needed for a specific application or a service, a jump server can provide a simple solution without the full complexity of a full VPN. But again, you can avoid all of this by using Twingate to remotely access your devices. See the link in the description to get your free account. So that's it for jump servers, a really useful way to access your remote devices. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.